What's up guys, it's Mike with Alpha Reptile. We're back four years later with Troy Goldberg and the room has changed so much since the last time we were here. Troy's been nice enough to host us for a few days and we have to film this video because it would be a missed opportunity to not. What are a couple of the changes that have happened? Well, I've changed, the big change is uh, I went from two rows to three rows. Um, and uh, change the whole rack system so I don't have that uh, flappy light shield anymore. It has like actual hard rigid light shield. I built a lot of new tanks. They're all the custom Euro fronts. Um, most of them are built by myself, but some of them with the curved front, um, the curved like vent duct ventilation, whatever you want to call it. Those are uh, the Protean. He built some for me and uh, I still have them from years ago, but 300 gallons brand the 300 new. 300 gallons brand new. To this uh, channel at least. Well, <laughs> as it's, oh man, it's about two years old now. I obviously don't have it completed yet, but I already did start ordering the glass. I'll have that done this summer. Maybe I'll do a video. We'll see, I probably won't. First, we gotta clean all this glass, and then we're gonna take you guys tank by tank to see what's inside it, talk about some of the plant species, and maybe a little bit about how he built them. Let's get into it. Well, it looks like we're starting it off strong with some yellow limoni, limoni, however you wanna pronounce it. Oh, uh, this is a dry lock background, you know, standard technique with the foam dry lock. Uh, I use black foam exclusively now just because you don't have to worry about the coverage nearly as much because when black shows through, it doesn't look bad like the nasty yellow foam, so. Uh, but yeah, just some uh, ghost wood and a couple of bromeliads, a couple of philodendrons. Couple uh, Mark Ravias. That's low growing tropical moss. That's pretty much what I do in uh, the majority of my tanks. And uh, next to them? This is the, these are the uh, Ranitomea reticulata. Dang, uh, Ranitomea and the frog. I oh, know. We got two, two hard hitters early on. Yeah, they're pretty cool frogs. You know, I do see them um, more than I, I guess, expected to. And I've got four of them in there. So maybe that's have something to do with it. I usually don't see all four at once, but. I can usually see two. Yeah, they're breeding and I'm having a heck of a time with uh, offspring though. I can't keep it alive. All hmm. the tadpoles morph out, they morph out healthy, and then in a couple weeks they're just withered away to nothing. They don't seem to eat springtails or anything. So talking to some of the breeders, they said, you know, that is sort of common for young pairs. They had the same, same kind of uh, results. And then eventually they just started producing healthy ones that survive. So and they lose like none now. Next to them. That is another, oh, there's one out. Ranitomea Highland Sorensis. I guess we didn't mention, but that last tank we uh, filmed was, uh, that was a cork background. Like you just did, Sharif a bunch of tanks on Instagram, I guess helped inspire me to start using some cork. I just have two in there, I just have a pair. I don't know, cause they like to raise their own tadpoles. When you have bromeliads in there in random tomato tanks, sometimes you're not gonna be pulling nearly as many egg clutches. So I haven't, I've got a couple I'm raising up before I switch them over to this tank, so. And what plant is this? I know that'll probably be a- This one here? Yeah. That is a, <laughs> it's a monolina. Can't remember which one it is though. Um, I, I don't remember. I got it from Glassbox Tropicals. It grows really well and it can get a little crazy. When it blooms or it flowers, it kind of spits these seeds everywhere and they just, like you can see one grew up high. Yeah. Um, but the leaves do get pretty big. They can get like, I'd say six to seven inches long and five inches across. Next one here, obviously we got to talk about the beautiful Anthurium forgetii. This tank, it's had a couple of different frogs in it. In my last tour it had a, my second, a second pair of Dendrobates is Urius. I've tried keeping multiple pairs of certain frogs and at the end of the day, I, I just can't do it. Um, <laughs> I feel like I gotta have other frogs. Right now, those are some uh, Anchicaia uh, histrionica that, uh, or some people call them Anchicaiensis, but I'm, I'm not. You ain't no just, science boy. Yeah, I just call them the, what they've always been called. That tank, similar, that's another dry lock background, uh, ghost wood, you know. Only difference there, you've got some forgetty eye. You know, I love the anthuriums, but sometimes I'm just like, I feel like I need to take it out and just open <laughs> up the tank so it just opens up so much more. But the frogs definitely like it. It gives them a lot of shelter. And also they like climbing on it too. It's just a yeah, huge surface. Yeah, it looks nice one. too. Yeah, it does look nice. That's a, a the new freshy boy leaf there right in the front. There will be. Little well, froglets up there. Oh yeah, I guess. Over here, uh, these are all the, uh, Ufaga Pamilio tanks, they're up top. Uh, there's Rio Calubre in that tank. Doesn't look great right now. It uh, was pretty dry. There's a couple gaps between the substrate and the foam. Froglets were able to get under it. Trying to catch them, it became a nightmare. So I ended up having, just like a month ago, I ripped all everything out the bottom, 
threw in the uh, the sponge mat, sponge filter mat. And <laughs> what is that? It's the coffee. Oh. The sponge filter mat. And uh, so, yeah, it's not grown in nearly what my other tanks are, obviously. All right, next to them is the... These are... Escudo. Yes, Ufaga Pamilio Escudo. Yeah, these were reclassified a few years ago. Um, really? Yeah. I still call them Ufaga Pamilio Escudo. Yeah, they're just Ufaga Escudo de Vargas. I mean, they are smaller, and I guess their texture is kind of more granular, I guess. To more me, like they're still granular just... Granular for us? Yeah, they're still just Pamilio oh, to me. Remember, I'm, I'm just a frog guy, not a scientist. <laughs> uh, in here, I have a uh, Ufaga Pamilio Solarte male. I recently lost my 12-year-old wild-caught female. Wow. Um, so, yeah, she was old. I knew it was coming. I don't know where that frog's at, but... All good. I haven't seen it all weekend, so. Yeah, I didn't see it for a week, so I was like wondering if, I was like, maybe there was something in there that killed them both. And I was in there and just cleaning up and then, sure enough, he was plump and happy as ever. I was like, nice. oh, okay. Well, I'll get you a female then. So I'm looking for a female Ufaga Pamilio Solarte. So anybody knows? Anybody got one? Anybody knows anybody? Let me know. And then here? Here, these are the uh, Ufaga Pamilio Unknown Locale Bastimentos, or Tropical Garage Bastimentos is what hey. a lot of people call them. They do uh, resemble, I'm convinced that they have some Red Frog Beach blood in them. I don't know how much. Um, there's probably like a locale that's maybe in between Red Frog Beach and maybe in between Salt Creek. Because they look like Salt Creek, but they're double the size of Salt Creek. Different patterning than Salt Creek. And they look like Red Frog Beach. And they are the size of Red Frog Beach, but they're not as red. They're more of an orange. That's why I kind of think it's probably uh, Bastimentos. I mean, you know, it's a huge tourist place and people move, move frogs around. Yeah. And the people on the island, they sell frogs for five bucks and they give them to tourists. And tourists take them back to their room or whatever. And then they let them go wherever. The whole population on that island is mess Vicks. yeah it's a mess so i actually don't even know why we kind of keep stuff site specific there anymore it's kind of silly to me now this here is the kotari right correct that's the dendrobates tinctorius kotari some people call them kotari river and mine just came in as kotari so that's what they that's what i call them uh, that's a freshly set up tank their tank was uh i guess the wood had rotted in their old setup it was locally sourced wood so it wasn't like Malaysian drift or ghost wood. It was just from a lake around here. The background was completely destroyed as well by the ficus pamilla oak leaf. Corsifolia. Yep. Yep. So I just gutted it all. I don't think there's any ficus in there anymore. I tried my best. There may be some that was still on some moss that I kept from the tank. Maybe. I don't see any. But hopefully not. And um, this is a foam with like cork dust? Yes. That's exactly right. Foam, then I siliconed it, and then cork dust, and like some cork chunks. And honestly, it was like some scrap pieces of wood I had that I didn't really know how to use it. I actually liked the tank. It actually came out pretty cool, I think. Um, but I did that tank in like, I don't know, two hours maybe. And then here are the other Basties, as yep. you can tell by the froglet and a mama. Yep. These are the cemetery basti. And we discovered, I discovered that you have a male. Yeah, I thought I, I recently, again, <laughs> Wow, it just sounds like I lose so many frogs. Um, <laughs> lost my male. It was so odd. I'll show you here. He was just sitting right here on this bromeliad and looked completely alive, but his arm was like hanging off. And I was like, eh, that's funny. Slid the door open, no movement. And I went like, uh-oh. <laughs> was just not moving. He was also uh, old. That was my first, these were my first Pamelio I ever got uh, back in like 2011, I believe. So old frogs, but uh, I really had no idea what happened to that frog because there was no lesions. It wasn't skinny. It was very chubby. It looked perfect. I mean, a week before I saw it calling and they were breeding. I'm like, what happened? And I thought I had a 1.2, but it turns out that I have a 2.1. So maybe the old male just kind of lost the battle between the young male that I have. Mike discovered that he's like, yeah, that's calling from your basti tank. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> I I <laughs> no, no. Okay. Thanks, Mike. No problem, man. I think it was your presence that made him start calling. He got excited when he saw you. Probably. It's like, OMG, is that a washed up YouTuber? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. All right, the next to them are the you beautiful San Lorenzo. Yes, but that's not the species. 
That is the locale. Silvatica? Good job, Mikey. I, didn't, I don't actually, I didn't actually know that. Oh, These are wow. bold Silvatica. Very. That was actually my first large obligate. Even though they're considered large obligates, they're smaller large obligates. They're, yeah. I had uh, I had Black Jeans Familia years ago that the female rivaled the size of the, the female San Lorenzo. Black These Jeans, just... if you've never seen them in person, are, can be like massive. Familiar. Yeah, I've never Very seen big, them. Big, big Familia. One of my favorite frogs, and I think one of Bree's favorite frogs as well. I mean, they're super impressive, and I love like their modeling they get. But as they've aged, they, they like, that female used to be like almost solid orange with like kind of like spidered black lines. And now it's like, you can see it's like these crazy modeling patterns they have. I have a really cool frog in there too. Probably one of your most bold frogs. Like very, very they're bold. They're out very bold. constantly. Yep. But when, now the froglets, like people, when I saw them, I'm like, I haven't seen it in months. I'm like, like, or I see it every few weeks. They're super shy. I'm like they are, but these were shy too. Once they hit like that breeding age, yeah, then it's out. like, they just don't care. They're super, nice. super bold frogs. This this is a really nice tank. This is one of your newer ones. That's, that's a newer one, one. That's a cork. Cork, cork backgrounds. I do it a little different than you did, and Sharif does it. Uh, I, I just use the drill with the wire wheel brush. Yeah. Makes a huge mess. Even a bigger mess than carving, like, with the, the wire wheel and the foam. <laughs> it makes a bigger mess on this. Cause it's like a fine, like, carbon dust. Powder. Oh, God. Yeah. It's, it gets everywhere. But I wear my full respirator mask shield head thing whatever you want to call it but um this tank has a uh has a male anchikaya and then i just got a a sub adult anchikaya i'm not sure on the sex and then there's also a juvenile ufaga histrionica bahia solano in there um that i separated from the parents because i saw the male beating up on it <laughs> Dang. So i was like get out of here he's cool he's got some nice oranges i use a lot of the Naturals carotenoid supplement. Shows some variability. Or not cool, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, some people, like Joseph. Huh? East Coast Frogger. He's always like, orange, ew. I need red. Orange is still a cool frog. Picky, dude. Orange Lamani are incredible. Orange Speaking Lamani. of orange Lamani, <laughs> wow. Look this is this another tank. cork tank. I set it up in October, and the, the moss growth is pretty impressive. Yeah. The growth overall is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's looking great. Um, for being only set up, you know, six months or so. I have a young pair. I've had a female for a little while now, over a year, but I just got the male about two months ago from Julio, uh, AKA Dart Frogs on Instagram. He said it was four months old, but this thing arrived massive. It's way bigger than my four months old, I can tell you that. Maybe I had it three weeks and they started getting eggs and fertilizing them. So a very young male, but they're, they're producing viable offspring, or not offspring yet, but viable tadpoles and the female did transport. So I should have some, some baby oranges here in uh, about two months, maybe. That'll be exciting. Yeah, that'll be wicked. And some of the plants you used in here, obviously uh, a lot of bromeliads. Yeah. See, yeah, so the bromeliads, a lot of the bromeliads I use for the large obligates is uh, Neo Regilia Malibu, which unfortunately are not available right now because the guy everybody was getting them from, uh, Michael's bromeliads, has he they got hit by the hurricane this fall he's open again and he's got stuff but he still doesn't have the malibus um they're really great for the large obligates they have like the perfect size axle um for the tadpoles it's not too deep it's not too wide um but it's got a nice cup shape to it and they're not spiky like a lot of neo regilia and spiky bronze with large obligates are kind of a, a no-no um, some mm -hmm. people do it and that's fine like pamilio it's not an issue because they don't weigh a lot and but they could still be i mean they can get scratches on their stomach and then they can get a bacterial or fungal infection rocks. these are rocks yeah baby real rocks with some low growing tropical moss yep stays nice and trim coming soon at the jungle vault i use a manscaped on it and in here are the ufaga histrionica taro that's correct very unique frogs uh, yes a lot of times people you know with the large obligates some of them come in like crazy flashy colors so these Got overlooked for a while, but I think they're starting to get their stride. A lot of people seem to want the Tato now because they're just very unique grayish brown frog with, you can have orange spots or some of them have red. Some have like, I, my male's kind of mustardy. These are producing for me. There is a tadpole uh, here. You can see probably some trophic eggs in there. They're raising a tadpole. I know they transported at least one and they're still producing eggs. So 
I think they, she wants to transport more. And the tank itself is looking pretty solid. These, for the record, these are what, 44 by 17 by 24? That's correct. And this is a foam and hydrolon. They, they don't look great at first because it's just this weird textile, geotextile Carpet. fabric <laughs> or whatever that you just put in the background. But over time, plants and moss grow onto it really well. Your creativity with it is kind of limited. So I'm not mm. like a huge fan. I mean, it's very quick and easy to set up you know you can basically do the foam do the gorilla glue put that stuff on it and the tank's done you know you can you can literally plant it in a day and throw frogs in it the next day and what is that that's a what this little bromeliad thing oh that's, that's a, a vresia i call it racinae i've heard people call it racinia um but i call it the vresia racinae it's a not really a bromeliad that uh, the frogs will use to rear tadpoles in it's too small but it's a nice really nice accent bromeliad for aesthetic reasons that's the lincoln park right yes that's lincoln park zoo uh there's some philodendron varicosum which almost all my tanks have that varicosum We've got some other little vines and stuff that i probably don't even know the names of um mystery vines but probably i'm sure people could and then this guy that is a uh, dwarf african violet it's growing really well really cool oh yeah that grows like crazy and a lot of times i'll just rip it out because it'll get too big and too too loud and then you just literally take like one leaf like this, you could throw it anywhere. You could throw it right in the moss and it'll grow. It'll grow a plant. It grows like this, like the same way you can do that with the begonia. and you can do it with that plant too. Okay, and in here we have, these are the blue histos, right? Yep, some people call them blistos. Their tank is very nice. And there's that, the adult size monolina. Yes. Over there with the nice flowers. And I just, I cut like, 15 leaves out of there about two weeks ago because it was just taken over. So wow. yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool tank. That's a dry lock tank. The, the larger tanks, I, I seem to, I guess, make them a little more display like, not so much uh, like utilitarian. Like it's still functional, um, but it's nicer aesthetically, I'd say, than some of the smaller tanks. I try a little harder to make them look nicer. I don't, I care. I guess I care more on the bigger ones. Yeah, the Blue Histos, uh, they've produced a few froglets for me. Uh, it's a young pair. The froglets that they produce, I none of them made it, so hopefully they'll they'll get it, they'll get their act together. Um, and all the tanks that we've been filming, these bigger ones, those are all sponge mat bottoms. They are not. There's no substrate in any three of those tanks. Here are the My, bullseye. Yep, the second large obligates I had were bullseye. A classic, a true classic for the histrionica. Mine are kind of frustrating because the offspring they produce never seem to have the bullseye. <sighs> so I make jokes and call them false bullseyes. But um, these guys have the bullseye. Yeah, both the parents do. The female's got, a, I mean, the female's like a quintessential bullseye. She's perfect. The male's got a little smaller of a dot and he's not as, you know, vibrantly colored. It's weird. So, uh, there was t a period in time when I'd get four froglets and they'd all have the bullseye. And then the next round I'd get four froglets and none would have the bullseye. Right so... now, we're probably going on about nine or 10 rounds of froglets with no bullseye. Wow. Yep. And what do we have in here, Troy? These are uh, more Anchikaya. These are some of the Anchikaya subadults. I had five of them. So um, they're just kind of split up amongst tanks so I can try and see which ones are males, which ones are females. This is a cork background. I've only had this one set up maybe a month and a half, two months. This one's cool because I like the little pond you have in the bottom there and the like, yeah. coconut. It's actually just a little hollowed out coconut shell. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Not a whole lot to talk about these No, there's, just, there's some orchids, there's some uh microgrammas you know usual suspects lots of moss and just for those of you wondering he's not going to share his moss plug so chill yeah not happening I'm not i mean i asked the person and they said they do not wish to be <laughs> known yes oh this is a bohemia solana correct one thing i have been trying to do a little more in the tanks is i guess kind of more like what it is in the rainforest is Trying to keep the ground primarily leaf litter and have the moss just grow up top on branches and wood because that's kind of what you see mainly in the, well, well, at least what I see in videos and pictures of people <laughs> in the jungle because I've never been there. So. Nah, coming 2023, baby. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I'm Let's passported up. That tank over to here, these are the large form redheads. Yep. And the tank, I mean, look at that, how terrible that bromeliad looks on the left. <laughs> but they raised tadpoles in it, so I can't remove it. I want to remove it. Like, it's make it, It's really tough to be honest. There's literally a tadpole, like, in that bromeliad axle right there. 
I want to remove it so bad. I hate the way it looks. Absolutely hate it. I've just been letting them do their thing. Um, this tank has some fake rocks in it. Uh, and it's got some real rocks too. Yeah, these are the large form Ufaga Histrionica redheads, which are one of my faves. These guys have been pretty shy since we've been here. Yeah. Not a, not a whole lot. Moving on to the bottom. Vanessa? This yep. is, is this one of your older tanks? Uh, yeah, I did that. Well, it's one of the ones I did when I moved out here, but I did it quick. Oh, sure. these are the yellowheads. Correct. Brazilian yellowheads. That tank was also set up at the same time, so I did those. They're all dry lock, but I did like four tanks in like two, no day, time. Like two days. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice Selaginella. Yeah, I'm not sure which one that is. It is There's cool. any yellow that, heads in there. That's the begonia that I'll rip that all out and throw it in the trash, <laughs> and then it'll be back in four months. Next to them is another pretty sweet looking these are the oh these are citronella there we yeah. go these Good are the job. citrons nice. a for effort today mike thanks man i'm starting to get which which uh, animals are in each up top yeah yeah they seem to that's where they sleep frogs right now are are not very active um because normally my lights have just come on yeah um they went off for about a half hour 40 minutes so they normally shed their skin and then they become they get all active in yeah. here we got Gingerbreadis tinctorius oil oil puck. Female is looking rough. Yep. Um, I was telling you the other day that since I've got it, um, it's gone looked amazing, and then looked like crap, and then looked amazing, and then looked like crap. A lot of times when it goes from uh, winter to spring out here, so much change in the temperature and humidity that some of the frogs they seem like they they get sick for a month or so. And then, I, but I try to let their immune systems do it. If she starts looking like worse in the next week and doesn't start improving, then uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give them some uh, ivermectin treatment. And that's uh, Begonia van Kerkhovena. Correct. More at Lincoln Park Zoo. Mark Gravia. Mark Gravia. That's then... the tank that has the uh, gonotodes. Oh, really? Agabularis. Ag Ag Albogularis. About, well, yeah, that one. Those are fine spot Lukes. There you go. I've got, got some... uh, a male and a female, and then. A sub-adult, or actually no, an adult, that's got a really weird hunchback that I just kept. I have any de deformed froglets, I don't euthanize them. I give them a fighting chance, and if they end up surviving, I just keep them or give them away if somebody wants it. The old mascot hey. was my uh, Wash moss. my tripod blue histo that I called Manfrotto. Once I got the new female, that frog disappeared quickly. I think it was a male, I'm guessing. And uh, the <laughs> proven male was like, uh, uh this is my, this is my <laughs> land. That's my girl. I love this look, the little mini palm trees. This is Biophytum sensitivum. So I didn't plant any of the Biophytums in this <laughs> it's tank. It's just grown out of the moss. Yeah. The That's back. actually, that tank right there was the tank I built on my channel. That was the epic how to build a tank with a water feature or whatever. Oh yeah. Currently does not have water feature running with it because I didn't feel like running a plug. Where it was before, before I moved everything around, I could plug it in. Uh, now I just, I didn't, I didn't ever get around to it, so. Still looking good. Yeah. All right, in here we got the Phyllobates terribilis and a yep. beautiful anthurium. These are the mints. And yeah, there's five of them in there currently. I do have two other ones that got really bad nose rubs. Note to self, if you're keeping Terabilis, don't know if dry lock is the best background choice for them hmm. because it's it can get really rough and like rocky. They're known for kind of like catapulting themselves <laughs> with crickets climbing the wall. And I think that's how they're banging up their noses on it. So I had two of them with pretty bad nose rubs. So they are being treated with the uh, silver sulfa diazine right now. So they're in a tub and I'm keeping them on the drier side. They produce really well for me in that tank. Oddly enough, something interesting in that tank is people always say Terrabilis, you know, you don't need a tall tank. They love it. You can get a 12 inch tank and they'll be fine because they're super terrestrial and they don't climb. <laughs> Mine do not lay clutches on the ground. I have two coconut. I have two coconut huts up top with petri dishes, and I have one on the ground with petri dish. They've they've used the one on the ground t twice, and the ones up top they've used probably a hundred times. Damn. So they all and there. I find them climb. They climb up top all the time. And there's a little water feature in there. Uh, currently not plugged in because I had it taped off in the winter time. So it was really humid in there. So I just didn't want to add to the humidity so they don't get foot rot. That's something pretty common with them, hey? Yes. 
really prone to foot rot. In here, we got the fine spot. Azorius, yes. There's, uh, I've got a couple goofballs in there, and then I've got uh, a pair, and then I have an extra male as well. That's oh, a trio. The one male has a like shoulder issue, and then I had two froggets, one, because I raise my froggets communally, so sometimes you get one that missing a foot or missing an eye or something, so uh, I have one of each in that tank that I just kept. The one with the missing the eye is really, really, really going to be an awesome frog. How was that caused? That's typically just through, like, when they're in the tadpole stage, right? Yeah, other tadpoles get hungry, and they say, give me that eyeball. <laughs> And here we have green sips? Yellowbacks. Oh, these are yellowbacks. Other ones, green sips. Correct. This is like one of those very moss heavy tanks that looks so cool. Yeah, that tank also gets that begonia. Lita or Maldonado or whatever. Yes. And you recently ripped it out because there's not a whole lot. But Correct. I imagine it'll be back in no time. I can already see it from here where it's starting to grow back. Yep, right here. It, top it just grows anywhere. It, it's really a frustrating plant, to be honest with you. I've got uh, a trio of yellowbacks in there. There's two males and a female. Nice. One of my oldest frogs. I think those are like 14 or 15. Well, yeah, I guess I got, I got them in 2008, so that'd be 15, wouldn't it? Next to them, we already have said that we have got the green sips. Green sips. That's the oldest setup in the room. And how long has this been set up for? 2010. This used to be covered in the, the dreaded Corsifolia. Correct. But it looks like you, you did a pretty good job. Oh, I lied. Uh, I was going to say, you did a pretty good job ripping it all out, but nope. It'll be back soon enough. For those beginner hobbyists that want like a nice lush green background, that's how to do it is with the course folio. <laughs> and you'll get sick of it pretty quickly, especially when you get more into the hobby and you can grow some of the other cooler Markgravias and, and it'll moss. Choke everything. It'll choke out bromeliads. It'll choke out everything. Everything. Over here. These are the peacocks. Top cocoa hut. Yeah, that's where they like to look sleep. Another nice... Selaginella. I forget which one that is too. <laughs> Figures. I probably have it labeled in one video from I don't know when, but a while ago. Yeah. Is this uh Anthurium or that is Philodendron Montanum. That's a nice plant. It gets pretty big. Yeah. But it's been staying small. I mean I've had that one planted over a year and it, that's the biggest it's gotten. So it's growing slower in there. Um but I had it in the 300 gallon. I still have some in the 300 gallon and I have it in my 180 gallon in the house And the leaves are like 8 to 10 inches across. They're big. And in here the very last tank. These are Alobates Aparo and I haven't seen them all weekend. They call all the time, but Very shy frogs. They're yeah, very not cool frogs. Uh, what probably arguably the, the coolest call. I love their call. Yeah, like you said, you hear them calling all weekend. The only time you're going to see them is from a distance and after feeding. So after you feed mm -hmm. them and you're a good five to eight feet away, you can see them come out and they're super fast though. That was kind of a mishmash tank I built really quickly. That's awesome. the old um, drip wall tank. That was the first uh, Euro front tank that I built myself. The final part of the room here, the 300 gallon paludarium. We finally put some fish in here. Got some cardinal tetras, some raspora, as well as a few fork tail rainbow fish. And the shrimp. Can't the forget their shrimp. mono shrimp. The mono shrimp. Um, yeah, it's uh, 60 by 24 by 48. It's about 300 gallons. Um, it's got about 40 gallons of water in the bottom. And the sump as well. Yes. Uh, well, normally I have the sump covered so you don't see it, um, but my dog Enzo. Um, he likes to do little 360s and he broke it. So <laughs> until I get more panels, um, yeah. But uh, this has the Cruzio Hyla Um I have three males, so I'll probably trade a male for a female here. Some really nice philodendrons um, and some anthuriums, uh, moss obviously, some margravias. But yeah, I wanted to take advantage of the size and use some of these bigger plants, but they've actually outgrown it. So they're hitting the top and they're growing weird because they don't have anywhere to go. So it may be time to remove them, which is super sad. <laughs> so sad. Um, but I'm hoping maybe I can like get some chunks out of them and then just replant them and have them grow again. Some little drip wall action going on. There's four different little waterfall spots um, with a nice trickling effect. So I built a custom rain system for it, or a rain bar, I guess. And it's pretty discreet. 
But uh, here's the rain. It's very quiet. The rain. How peaceful. Right on. And if you guys are wondering more about this, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time about it. It is truly a massive system here. And as we're talking, the mist goes off as well. Uh, Troy has a like several part series on his channel that I'll link in the description down below. And uh, you guys can go check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you click the like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave them in the comments down below. I answer everything. Uh, Troy is obviously accessible on Instagram. He does have a YouTube channel, not that he ever posts to it, but you know, it's there. And uh, tons of information there for those of you that want to know more about the frogs, about the frog room, that's where to find it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you in the next one. Oh, make sure to click subscribe and check out the Twitch. Links in the description. New merch is coming soon, and we'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.